Hello everyone. Given the many questions and let's say the importance of economic value to consumers, you can see here that we have uh, an example. It's very similar to all the slides you have from class, but let's make it more pragmatic. Let's think of a, of a real case. And you can see here, you have the, the usual suspects. You have all the blocks which represent the customer, best alternative, meaning the competition. Then you have the differentiator, which can be positive and it can be quantitative or qualitative, but it can also be negative, where you see the competitive disadvantage. And this gives you the total customer value that is pretty much the area in which you can, you can charge a price. So um, let's look into that more, more precisely. Let's think of a company which is producing a machinery for uh, plastic pellets and it's a very great machine. It's, it's superior to, to competition. And so you're the marketing manager of such company with such amazing product, which provides a lot of savings or a lot of benefits to the customer. And you want to visualize, you want to make it very easy to understand for, for your customers, uh, to, to see why they should buy from you. So, um, Let's say you, uh, you need to approach one specific customer, as we remember from class, even between one customer and the other within the same segment, there can be slight variations. So let's, let's imagine you have one specific uh, customer in mind, and you know this customer is considering uh, the purchase of the product similar to yours, but from a competitor. Let's make Let's put real numbers here. Um, let's say the customer's best alternative is 200,000 euros. And you know that your machinery can increase the height, the output, meaning it can produce more plastic pellets. And that means more money for, for your customer. And it's going to save energy because it's using a new compression uh, technology, which is less um, energy consuming. So um, all of these things are quantitative competitive advantages. You can clearly calculate how much they are in a mathematical way and the customer is probably going to accept them. You also have another type of advantage. It's the fact that your production process, uh, given the fact it uses less uh, energy, is also more eco-friendly. And this is tougher to calculate. Nonetheless, you've made your research, you've asked people how much they would be willing to pay for something which is, you know, more and more eco-friendly, it's good for the environment and so on. And you can pinpoint to a precise number, the value of this eco-friendliness. And we have to be, of course, very fair with our customers. It's not enough to say our product is better. It also got some negative, um, negative benefits or disadvantages, let's say. So these are the competitive disadvantages. In, in particular, your, um, your machine requires the customer to change a filter. The competitor product doesn't even have that filter, but that's why it's less eco-friendly than ours. So, we have this disadvantage, but you know, it's all part of the game. Um, it allows us to produce a more eco-friendly product. And you also know how much this filter is going to cost to your consumer. So what you do, you, you put nice numbers, you consider the economies of your specific customer and you say, dear customer, you would pay 200,000 euros for a competitive product. But if I were selling you the same product, then your the total customer value, the total gov, uh, value I give you would be the same, would be 200,000. But I don't just do what the competitors do for 200,000 euros. I do much more than that. I increase your output. And if I run the number, given your contribution margin, given the number of units, 
given the industry you're in, given the price levels in your country, I know that using my machinery is going to be worth to you 24,000 euros. And the fact I'm saving you energies and given the fact that energy in your country has this cost, uh, I can save you 6,000 euros per year. Um, I continue, I repeat, in your country, in your country, because um, there are differences, for example, in the cost of energy can, can be from 10 times to three times higher uh, to one third, it really changes. So if you save an amount of energy, you need to calculate, you need to, you need to translate that into the economies of the customer. So you have to be very specific. And the fact you are eco-friendly means that you can write that on your, um, on your package. So when you're selling pellets, you can go to your own customers and say, we are saving a lot of, uh, a lot of um, uh, CO2, we are saving energy, our production process is more eco-friendly, and I undertook my analysis, and I'm telling you this is worth uh, 10,000 euros. Again, you will notice this is a qualitative competitive advantage. It is soft, so you can make the calculations, and you have to make the calculations, actually, and they can be very good, but just let's get out of the mathematics or the arithmetic here and think about the difference between quantitative and qualitative. Qualitative benefits are much harder to be accepted by, by customers. It's simply the way it is. Um, the fact that they're not uh, easily uh, calculated or lab tested, uh, tested is something that makes them harder to be accepted. That's how it is. Um, also, you say, dear customer, <coughs> you know, this filter you have to change and you have to change it every year. It's going to cost you 6,000 euros. So you're fair to the customer. You also tell your customer, I have disadvantages compared to, to competition. So, you know, you're, you're being absolutely, um, you know, absolutely fair with the customer. If you sum this all up, if you say, I can make what the competitor can make, so I can deliver the same value worth 200K, which comes from the machinery producing pellets. And if you add all of the extra advantages and of course subtract the disadvantages, you get the total customer value. Now, what does the total customer value mean? This again is simply giving you a nice area, a nice range over which you can apply your prices. In the specific example, you would be a fool to give a superior product for a price which is lower than competition. So let's call this price or customer best alternative, the price of the competitive product, your floor. Of course, you can charge less. You would just be a fool to do. So to me, that's the floor. And then the total customer value, so the maximum of all the summary of all the benefits that you give is your price ceiling. So it would be harder uh, or it would be much hard, very hard to charge any price above that. Nonetheless, now you have a range, you know, you have a floor and you have a ceiling. Which price should you, should you charge? Well, price setting is quite tricky. We have seen examples of companies asking for 1% of their extra value, other companies asking 99% of that extra value they provide. Um, a rule of thumb making things very easy is one tenth, so 10%. Let's see in the, in the next slide what it means. So again, you make all of your nice calculations. You know the total customer value is 244K, and that means the extra value so the, the summary of the competitive advantages over competition is 44,000 euros. Uh, what's one tenth? Well, 10%, that's 4,400. So if I were to ask you, what is the optimal price? And I just need a quick answer. You can tell me, I look at the competitor's price or the customer best alternative. I sum up the benefits I give my competitive advantages, subtracting competitive disadvantages, and I take one tenth 
of that extra value. So in our example, the possible price or the quick one would be 204,400 euros, which again is the price of the competitor's product plus one tenth of the extra value we provide.